for joining us. This is the day that the Lord has made. We are glad, we are excited about this word that's going forth. We want to wish all of the fathers, whether they are biological or natural, or, or just assisting uh, uh, with the upbringing of children, happy Father's Day. The word says, honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the face of the earth. So if your father is alive, then throw your arms around him, tell him thank you. If he has passed, uh, just remember his teachings. Try the best way to honor your father is to do what he instructed you to do. Maybe your father wasn't in your life. Maybe he didn't have a whole lot to give, but he's still your father, still worthy of honor. If he is alive, you can still reconcile that relationship. Don't let anybody trick you as long as the blood run warm in your vein and you have breath in your body. You can honor your father and your mother. They are a team. It's not that one get more praise and glory and honor than the other, but God said that they both must be honored, they must be respected, and they both must be loved. If you have your Bible, if you would turn to Proverbs chapter number 8, we'll be reading and dealing with verses 8 through 14, 17 through 21. Now, I will reference from the King James Version as well as the NIV Version. And we have a lesson principle that we wish to follow this morning. And it says that people desire wisdom and hope to be rewarded uh, when they search for it. Why is wisdom so desirable? It says wisdom value is more tangible. Gained, it gives knowledge, gives courage, and it leads toward God's path of justice and righteousness. Now our objective this morning that we want to follow and look for is recognize the incorruptible value of godly wisdom into producing wealth, righteousness, and justice. And as we explore this, we want to ask the underlying question, what is the meaning of life? Why are we here on this earth? And as we go in there, I believe God will speak with you. I believe God will reveal to you what your true purpose for being here on this earth is. In Proverbs chapter number 8, beginning at the 8th verse, it begins by saying in the NIV, All the words of my mouth are just. None of them is crooked or perverse. And when we look at that particular scripture, this is what the author of the text is saying as it relates to God. That every word that proceeds out of his mouth is a just word. Every word that he says is full of justice. It's nothing crooked. It's nothing perverse. It's 100% factual. Now, if you were to pause a moment, you know some people that have said some things, they've done some things, and the words that come out of their mouth don't match up with what they're doing. Well, every word that God speaks will come to pass. Every word that God ordains from the throne room of heaven, every word that he gives to a teacher, a minister, a pastor, prophet, evangelist, apostle, every word that comes out will produce tangible fruit. It will not fall on deaf ears. It will accomplish what God has for it to accomplish. Now, the reason that I pause to say that is when you are hearing the word, you must be receptive of the word. Don't worry about the teacher. Don't worry about how tall or short they are, what they got on, where they come from, whether they have an accent or not. Your purpose during the time you are sitting under their presence is to grasp this word, to understand this word as much as possible. It goes on in the text to say, to discerning all those that are right. They are upright to those that have found knowledge. Said, so choose my instruction over silver and knowledge rather than choice gold. In this text, it says that the word of God is plain to those that understand and right to them that has found knowledge. When we talk about wisdom, we are talking about a God-given spiritual gift. And I want to pause right there. 
every believer has at least one spiritual gift. If you are unaware of what your spiritual gift is, then take, for example, this, this thought into consideration. Number one, if you were to go to Google, search the spiritual gift inventory, or simply type in spiritual gifts, you could get a list of them. You can take that inventory. Taking that inventory does not mean that that is your spiritual gift. That is a tool that you can use in conjunction with the Word of God through prayer, meditation, through pastoral counsel to identify what your gift could be. You can also go to lifeway.com. They have a free uh, test on there to where you can identify that. But every believer needs to possess godly wisdom. You cannot get it from uh, reading. You can't get it from going to the final university. It is a spiritual matter. It has to come from God. With all that said, it says that once you obtain wisdom, then the word of God makes sense to you. Once you get understanding, knowledge, and discernment, it's easy for you to comprehend the things of God. As we dive down into the lesson, it says that we are to choose God's instruction instead of seal and knowledge rather than choice. But what does that mean? In any avenue in life, you have to be instructed on how to do it. When you were in school, in order to be an educator, to be a teacher, teachers have to go through a prescribed means of instruction in order to understand how to best deliver the curriculum to children of various ages. So it is in the house of God. When we come to church, we come to church to be instructed on how to live out our life. We come to church to find out what thus says the Lord so that we can take those steps in following how God will want us to live, not only on Sunday, but in a day-to-day -day life. If you think this is hard, then consider the scripture. The way of the transgressor is hard. And the reason that's hard is because you're breaking God's plan. You're going against the mold and you're having a difficult time. In the 12th verse, it says, I wisdom dwell together with prudence, possess knowledge and discretion. To fear the Lord is to hate evil. It says that I hate pride, arrogance, evil behavior, and perverse speech. Counsel and sound judgment are mine, and I have insight, I have power. The 17th and the 18th verse says, I love those who love me, and those who seek me find me. So we are, with, with me are riches, I'm enduring wealth and prosperity. It said, my fruit is better than fine gold. What I yield surpasses choice silver. And knowing and bestowing a rich inheritance on those who love me and make their treasuries full. So it's God's intention that you have the best blessing. Now let's go deeper into this word and let's explore what it means. It said wisdom speaks to all those who are willing to hear. It issues a word of assurance. And hearers can be confident in receiving and applying truth and reliability to the discourse. The source of true wisdom does not come from humanity, but it comes from divinity. That means it comes from God. Righteous words emanate from a heart, a mind, and a soul that is righteous. Because the righteous mind starts with thinking right thoughts and speaking right words. The end result is righteous action. Now notice what the author says in this text. He says, first of all, righteous words come from a righteous heart, mind, and soul. We have already identified in previous lessons that all human beings are made up of three parts. They have a body, they have a soul, they have a spirit. The words come in based on the teaching that we see through our ear gates, our eye gates, we're seeing what we're saying and what we're speaking. 
what we are, what we are being receptive to. The things that are on TV, the radio, what we enter into our inner man is what determines the words that we speak. The words we speak determines the course of action that we will take. Now, Paul issues a prescription and a warning at the same time. And he tells us whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are good report, think on these things. So the stepping stone, the starting step, the starting block is to watch what you think. Watch how you're affected by words and circumstances that are around you. If we look at the news today, we see that there's a lot of civil unrest. We see injustice in all various types of forms. We see people that are standing up for the wrongs that have been committed against people. We also see people in leadership, government officials, that's not living up to the responsibilities of their elected office. The reason that these things happen is because we have taken God out of the picture and we are leaning toward our own understanding. We are not feeding our inner man. We are not feeding our spirit, our soul, and our body. Consider this, for example. If you go to a restaurant and order your favorite meal, for me, I like a good steak, salad, baked potato. Comes with all the trimmings, maybe a roll, maybe some vegetables on the side. But when the meal comes, at no time have I ever been in a restaurant to where they say you only have 20 minutes to eat the meal. If you want to get godly wisdom, if you want to get godly instruction, you have to be able to sit down and have a teachable spirit. You cannot come to church and two minutes after you get there, you're looking at your watch. Two minutes after you get there, you're wondering how long the song is going to be, how long the devotion is going to be, how long the prayer is going to be. Let me submit something to you. In the civil rights era, people stayed in church all day and all night because the church was a safe haven. One of our most celebrated holidays is watch night. It happens on the 31st of December. The tradition of watch night is because enslaved African Americans would pray and hope that the new year would bring freedom. Now we recently celebrate Juneteenth. Juneteenth celebrated the freedom of slaves that were not aware they were free because of the Emancipation Proclamation. So in order to truly remain free, we have to know how to apply wisdom and how to carry out the freedom that's been given to us. Now with that, we're going to need some help. As we get into the lesson, we find that not only do we have to guard our thoughts, we have to guard our actions. If you say that you're going to do something to someone, then that places you in a position to where you can, without restraint, engage in violent acts. You have to exercise discernment. Discernment simply means to develop an accurate perception with a view of obtaining spiritually inclined perspective and understanding. In other words, you regulate your behavior. You determine what's right and what's wrong, and then you carry out those actions. Without the spirit, it is impossible to carry out the creed that God has laid down before us. But from the spirit of God, but consider them foolish. Anybody that does not possess the spirit thinks the things of God just don't make sense. The person with the spirit makes judgment about all things. But to those who are on the outside, everything that is said is said in parables so that they can understand it. This is one of Jesus' favorite teaching methods. But those that have wisdom can understand things and they know how to act. If we are willing to ask for forgiveness, if we are willing to turn from our wicked ways, if we are willing to simply take the steps that God has laid out for us, then we can seek the kingdom of heaven. What is prudence? 
Here in the text, the author identifies that prudence means care, caution, and good judgment. When you look at the news, people have a right to voice their opinion, but how do you go about voicing your opinion? How do you go about carrying out your actions? Compare the wisdom of Dr. Martin Luther King with the wisdom of what's going on today. We have more civil, we have more seasoned believers, we have more people of age and experience that know how to fight the good fight of faith. What we have today and what we see today is a result of ill instruction. What we see today is people that are upset and tired of injustices, which they have a right to be. But if we're going to fight the fight, we have to know how to fight strategic. Consider this, if we're going to do a march, then we need to have an organized march. Someone needs to video record it. Someone needs to follow along to ensure that all of the participants in the march are safe and that we're not causing harm to innocent bystanders. If we're going to do a march, we need to document incidents that happened that may involve law enforcement. And we need to hold those people in account. If we tab neighborhoods and businesses, that does no justice for the people that have been victimized. But if we hold politicians, mayors, governors, if we hold them accountable, if we take legal action against these agencies, and then we demand retribution in the form of wrongful deaths, civil action, to ensure that the parents and the family members of the wrongly victimized can go on and have some form of quality of life. If we hold the judges to a standard to where they are held accountable for enforcing the letter of the law, then we can fight the good fight of faith. But we have to know how to deal with the thing in the manner that God has given us. The word of God is clear that the heaven suffers violence and violence take it by force. That force is prayer. That force is studying the word of God. That force is declaration and decrees. That force is trusting God to lead and to guide us. We must be able to exercise caution whenever we do things because the generation that's behind us is depending upon us to get it right. If we are truly to seek God, if we do what does say the Lord, there are some benefits. Say God, seeking God first can be accomplished by several ways. Now, we've often heard the scripture say, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness. And what I want to say to you is, how do you seek the kingdom of heaven? How do you go about following God's righteousness? Well, I'm asking. Glad you asked that question. First of all, you got to read and study God's word. Sunday school, Bible study, church service, fellowships, revivals, gets you in the presence of God and his word. Admitting and repenting of personal areas of sin. None of us are perfect. All of us have areas that we can improve upon. And if you're the type of person that has never said that you are sorry for anything that you've done, you may need to revisit something. Jesus apologized for every sin that mankind ever created, past, present, and future. The least you can do is take an examination of yourself. And if you don't believe that you've done something wrong, I want to submit something to you. If you take a bath, immediately after you get out the tub, you'll notice that there's a ring around the tub that indicates the dirt and the things that came off of your body prior to you cleaning or during the cleaning process. If you were to clean your tub third, wait a few moments, get back in the tub, and take the same bath, what you will find is you still have some areas that have been omitted. There are still some areas that may not be as dirty, but still some residue remains. That's proof positive that we all stand in need of forgiveness, repentance, and deliverance. None of these things are designed to hurt us. They just help us to be better believers, better Christians. 
If we go on, we find that there are some benefits to having godly wisdom. We have to have a mindset of being conscious throughout the day of what God wants us to do. By talking to God through two-way prayer, that means not only speaking to God, but listening to what he has to say. Extending grace to others and asking good, open-ended questions is all part of the process. Now, what are the benefits of wisdom? Once you've done all these things, what is it that you can benefit for? Well, God says that with him is riches and honor. Now, when we think of riches, we normally think about monetary riches. And yes, we do need money to survive. However, we don't need to be driven by the lure, the desire to just have money. The riches that God is talking about is health, is prosperity, is family, is a relationship with him. Not only does he want to give it to you, he wants to give you enduring pros prosperity. Some teachers, some believers call exponential blessings. What does that mean? God's blessings does not cause grief. He does not give you something that puts you in a worse position than you were before you got it. So therefore, he's careful when he releases choice blessings on you because he wants to make sure that you can handle the blessing. So when God blesses you, he not only blesses you for you, but he blesses you for others as well. You get blessed to be a blessing. He said that this wisdom that God is speaking about is better than fine gold. And it has a yield that surpasses choice silk. It says that bestowing a rich inheritance on those who love love God and make their treasures full is God's desire. So what God wants to do is he wants to bless you. Not only do he want to bless you, he wants to go above, beyond, and exceed what your expectations are. We have to be able to adhere to the instructions in order to gain wisdom. Good instructions, good knowledge is more valuable than silver and gold. Wisdom, knowledge, instruction cannot be compared to material possessions. It's more than what we have in our possession. On this Father's Day, it's more than what someone can give you in your hand. Sometimes it has to do with what's in your mind, what they bestow in your heart. There are a lot of people that may not be biologically connected to you, but they can become your spiritual father. They can become your spiritual mother. They can tell you some things and the assistance to help out your biological parents. Everybody that comes across your path, God has sent them there for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. Sometimes they are there to receive what you have for them, and sometimes they are there to benefit you. But whatever your position in life, it is my prayer that you would gain as much wisdom, knowledge, and understanding as you possibly can. The book of Proverbs is an excellent tool. I encourage you to read it, to study it, to meditate on it, and to ask questions. Above all, I encourage you to make it a part of your daily life. As we conclude this lesson, we want to continually pray that the word that has gone forth does not fall on deaf ears. I pray now that you will continue to read and study God's word. The prayer is that, Lord, help us to walk in the way of wisdom so that our living may not be in vain. In Jesus' name, we pray that the position, the assignment, the path that you have led out for us today will come to pass and that you can receive the praise, the profit, and the glory. In Jesus' name, the Redeemed of God said, Amen.
Good morning. We like to say welcome as we conclude Sunday School of the Bryant Missionary Baptist Church. Wisdom is so valuable that it will never lose its value. And there is a feeling among men that if we are just left to our own and never seek God who's the source of wisdom, we would get better. But the scripture has us to know that with God, without God, we can do nothing. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. And another scripture says there is a way that seems right unto man, mm -hmm. but the end thereof is death and destruction. So we encourage each of us to seek wisdom and knowledge and truth which come from above, mm -hmm. where moth and rust and decay cannot get to. And Jesus is coming back and he says, I'm coming with my reward in my hand. Yes. And he that will remain faithful, he that will continually seek wisdom, knowledge, that he may apply it to his life. In him he will find a will or a source of wisdom that fadeth not away. Silver and gold will fade away. Rubies, but wisdom which is from above will last forever. We thank you. May God bless you and keep you is our prayer. We encourage you to join us at 1030 for our regular morning worship. God bless you and may he keep you is our prayer. Amen.